Hey, this is Austin, and this is just a breakdown of my DIY LED panels, how they're made and how they're controlled. I made 20 panels. Each panel has 50 pixels and is about a foot and a half by two feet wide. So this is the template that I made to drill the holes, and I just measured out and drew a grid. They're about like two inches apart each, except on the edges, they're one inch apart so that um, the boards can go together in any configuration and keep the same distance with the LEDs. Um, I did stack probably like four or five boards on top of each other and drilled straight through. Tried to make it as straight as possible so that the holes lined up really well all the way through. They're not perfect, but it worked out pretty well. I actually spent a lot of time trying to figure out how to do it and uh, I didn't have a drill press that was big enough to fit this inside of, and so that worked out pretty well. Each of the five rectangles consists of four separate panels that are just held together with two by fours, uh, done really cheaply. And I've divided each half of the rectangle into two panels, and so they're connected to each other and they live in one universe. And they, these two are connected right here with this connector. And the signal actually comes from up top there, the top left pixel, and comes down here and goes all the way across the stage to the center where all the cables come together and then they go to the controllers. All the pixels are run off of this computer here and it's nothing special, it's an old computer, a bunch of extra parts thrown together. Um, and it's running a software called Pixel Mapping which is created by a church called Faith Chapel Church in Billings, Montana, I believe. In the pixel mapping software, you just draw out um, the pixels in these different shapes here. You can do lines or squares. And over here, you can determine how many pixels are in each square. And then each one of these is assigned to a fixture, which is right here. And so any other lighting controller or lighting software will see this whole software as its own fixture. And so you've got all these channels here that you can control from a lighting board or from lighting software that will uh, determine how this functions. So there's some presets here too. You can see that these values change depending on what uh, design's kind of going. Uh, it's pretty easy to use. There are a lot of tutorials by the guy who created it, and I'll link those below as well. The DMX to SPI pixel controller has a UI that you can access via web browser, and that lets you set up which output goes to which universe. Like right now I have output one starting on universe 11. That's just kind of just arbitrary, but it is important to note, this is very important, that the alpha pixel uses Artnet and streaming ACN, but it um, calculates the universes based on how streaming ACN calcula calculates them. So universe one is one, and universe two is two but Artnet actually starts universes out at zero. So universe one is actually universe zero, and universe two is actually universe one. And that can get super complicated um, when you're working with kind of both ways of calculating them. And the pixel mapping software also bases the universes on Artnet. I'm also running QLC Plus, which is another free lighting program. And so QLC Plus basically just sees um, that software as a fixture. So this is the software right here, and there's an A and B um, like set of channels, and so you can have two designs kind of going at once, which can create some pretty cool looks. Uh, so your lighting software or lighting board will just see that other software as any other fixture with channels that can be modified. The software also supports integration with NDI, which is video over the network, or SDI via like a Blackmagic SDI input card, um, and that allows you to pipe live video or motion backgrounds onto your pixels. Now my wall is two inches apart for each pixel, so it's not very high density, but if you had the time and drilled enough holes, you could have a pretty good density wall that you can show live video that's happening in your service or motion backgrounds and make it look awesome. So the pixel mapping software sends DMX data over Artnet, which is just a DMX protocol over the network to um, controllers that convert the DMX signal to an SPI signal that the LEDs can understand. So let's go check out what those boxes look like. This first box has the actual controller, and here's the power supply for it. And then this top card here is the actual controller, the computer, and then it has two cards below it. And they each have four outputs that go over cat cable. What's really great about this controller is it separates all the outputs 
to these cards over here. And they're connected over cat cable, so you can buy a pretty inexpensive cat cable and run them all over your stage or wherever you're going outside to light the outside of your building. Um, and so you can distribute the signal very, very easily and inexpensively. Each one of these eight outputs goes to a card that has four actual outputs that go to the lights. These are what the lights actually plug into. And each strand can handle, I think, like 170 pixels, um, which is about a universe of DMX channels. You can have this controller to be configured with three cards. I have two cards currently with four outputs, so that's a total of 12 outputs you can possibly have, which then go to each one of these cards, which has four outputs. So you can have a ton of lights running off of this one controller. It can be a little bit confusing and hard to visualize kind of how the pixels are connected and mapped out to DMX channels, and it's all based on what output they're connected to the controller, and how many pixels you've specified in the controller are connected to that output. So that it does kind of all the math for you and figures out what channel each pixel needs to be. So this top left pixel is the very first pixel in all of the 1000 pixels. And it lives in universe 11, because I've decided that this column of pixels is universe 11, this column of pixels is universe 12, and then on this next panel, this column is universe 13. And so if we go back to the first panel, this pixel, since it's in universe 11, its address would be universe 11 DMX channel 1. Now, each pixel has three channels, a red, green, and blue channel. That's how the colors change. So since this has three channels, its address is 1, 2, 3, which means this address is number 4. The second pixel's address is number 4 in universe 11. And so you count 4, 5, 6, that's three channels, which means the third pixel is 7, would be its address. So it's in universe 11, channel 7. And if we look at the second panel, since this one is universe 11 and this one is universe 12, that would mean that its first pixel is DMX channel 1 on universe 12, not universe 11. Which also means since there's three channels, it's 1, 2, 3, which means this pixel is addressed as universe 12, channel 4, and so on and so forth. I hope that makes it a little less confusing for you. Um, it, even though DMX is a pretty simple concept, it does get complicated when there's this many channels. Um, so theoretically, you could create a scene and do the math and figure out what each pixel's address is, and you could change the three red, green, and blue channels to make it whatever color you wanted, and you could do that for all 1,000 pixels, which would just be absurd. Or you can use the pixel mapping software, or there's, I think there's tons of softwares out there. This one happens to be free, and it's pretty cool. Um, so that does all the calculations for you, which figures out what each channel is, and so you're essentially just throwing color and video over top of the layout, and then the program figures out, okay, this color is hitting here, and underneath it is this pixel. And so then it tells everything else in the system to make that pixel that color. Um, so makes it a thousand times easier. A thousand, hey, that's cool, there's a thousand pixels. That was, I didn't even plan that. Um, but yeah, I hope this video was helpful, and let me know if you have any other questions in the comments. Cool.